Hi hello welcome to Harshas Little Star Cafe that's going to keep you fast and happy Indian politician and first prime minister of India Jawaharlal Nehru biography Jawaharlal Nehru by name Pandit Nehru was born on November 14 1889 in Allahabad India and is the first prime minister of independent India from 1947 to 1964 who established parliamentary government and became noted for his neutralist non-aligned policies in foreign affairs he was also one of the principal leaders of the indian independence movement in the 1930s and 40s nehru was born to a family of kashmiri brahmans noted for their administrative aptitude and scholarship who had migrated to delhi early in the 18th century he was a son of motilal nehru a renowned lawyer and the leader of the Indian independence movement who became one of Mohandas that is Mahatma Gandhi's prominent associates Jawaharlal was the eldest of the four children two of whom were girls a sister Vijay Lakshmi Pandit later became the first woman president of the United Nations General Assembly until the age of 16 Nehru was educated at home by a series of English governess and tutors only one of those a part irish part belgian fredenard brooks appears to have made any impression on him jawaharlal also had a venerable indian tutor who taught him hindi and sanskrit in 1905 he went to harrow a leading english school where he stayed for 2 years nehru's academic career was in no way outstanding from harrow he went to trinity college cambridge where he spent 3 years earning an honor degree in natural science on leaving cambridge he qualified as a barrister after 2 years at the inner temple london where in his own words he passed his examinations with neither glory nor ignominy the 7 years nehru spent in england left him in a hazy half world at home neither in england nor in india some years later he wrote I have become a queer mixture of east and west out of place everywhere at home nowhere he went back to india to discover india the contending pulls and pressures that his experience abroad were to exert on his personality were never completely resolved 4 years after his return to india in march 1916 nehru married kamala kaul who also came from a kashmiri family that had settled in delhi their only child indira priyadarshini who was born in 1917 she would later under her married name of indira gandhi also served from 1966 to 77 and from 1980 to 84 as prime minister of india in addition indira's son rajiv gandhi succeeded his mother as a prime minister from 1984 to 1989 political apprenticeship on his return to india nehru at first had tried to settle down as a lawyer unlike his father however he had only dissolutory interest in his profession and did not relish either the practice of law or the company of lawyers for the time he might be described like many of his generation as an instinctive nationalist who earned for his country's freedom but like most of his contemporaries he had not formulated any precise ideas on how it could be achieved nehru's autobiography discloses his lively interest in indian politics during the time he was studying abroad his letters to his father over the same period reveal their common interest in india's freedom but not until father and son met mahatma gandhi and were persuaded to follow in his political footsteps did either of them develop any definite ideas on how freedom was to be attained the quality in gandhi that impressed the two nehrus was his instance of action a wrong gandhi argued should not only be condemned but be resisted earlier nehru and his father had been contemptuous of the run of contemporary indian politics whose nationalism with a few notable expectations consisted of interminable speeches and long-winded resolutions jawaharlal was also attracted by gandhi's instincts on fighting against british rule of india without any fear or hate nehru met gandhi for the first time in 1916 at the annual meeting of the indian national congress in lucknow gandhi was 20 years his senior neither seems to have made any initially strong impression on the other 
Gandhi makes no mention of Nehru in an autobiography he dictated while imprisoned in the early 1920s. The omission is understandable since Nehru's role in Indian politics was secondary until he was elected president of the Congress party in 1929. When he presided over the historic session at Lahore, now in Pakistan, that proclaimed complete independence as India's political goal. Until then, the party's objective had been dominion status. Nehru's close association with the Congress party dates from 1919 in the immediate aftermath of World War I. That period saw an early wave of nationalist activity and governmental repression, which culminated in the massacre of Amritsar in April 1919. According to the official report, 379 persons were killed. At, at least 1,200 were wounded when the local British military commander ordered his troops to fire on the crowd of unarmed Indians assembled in an almost completely enclosed space in the city. When Late in 1921, the prominent leaders and workers of the Congress party were outlawed in some provinces. Nehru went to prison for the first time. Over the next 24 years, he was to serve another eight periods of detention, the last and longest ending in June 1945. After an imprisonment of almost three years, in all, Nehru spent more than nine years in jail. Characteristically, he described his terms of in Caracuration as normal inter rules or in a life of abnormal political activity. Struggle for Indian independence After the Lahore session in 1929, Nehru emerged as a leader of the country's intellectuals and youth. Gandhi had shrewdly elevated him to the presidency of the Congress party over the heads of some of his seniors, hoping that Nehru would draw India's youth, who at the time were gravi dating toward extreme leftist causes. Into the mainstream of the Congress movement, Gandhi also correctly calculated that with added responsibility, Nehru himself would be inclined to keep it to the middle way. After his father's death in 1931, Nehru moved into their inner councils of the Congress party and became closer to Gandhi. Although Gandhi did not officially designate Nehru his political hair until 1942, the Indian populace as early as the mid-90s saw in Nehru the natural successor to Gandhi. The Gandhi-Irwin Pact of March 1931 signed between Gandhi and the British Viceroy, Lord Irwin, later Lord Halifax, signalized a truce between the two principal protagonists in India. It climaxed one of Gandhi's more effective civil, civil disobedience movements launched the year before as the Salt March, in the course of which Nehru had been arrested. Hopes that the gandhi Irwin Pact would be the prelude to a more relaxed period of Indo-British relations were not borne out. Lord Willingdon, who replaced Irwin as Viceroy in 1931, jailed Gandhi in January 1932, shortly after Gandhi's return from the Second Round Table Conference in London. He was charged with attempting to mount another civil disobedience movement. Nehru was also arrested and sentenced to two years imprisonment. The three roundtable conferences in London held to advance India's progress to self-government eventually resulted in the Government of India Act of 1935, which gave the Indian province a system of popular autonomous government. Ultimately, it provided for a federal system composed of the autonomous provinces and princely states. Although federation never came into being, provincial autonomy was implemented. During the mid-1930s, Nehru was much concerned with developments in Europe, which seemed to be just drifting towards another world war. He was in Europe early in 1936, visiting his ailing wife shortly before she died in a sanitarium in Lucene, Switzerland. Even at the time, he empathized, emphasized that in the event of war, India's place was alongside the democracies. Though he insisted that India could fight in support of Great Britain and France only as a free country. When the elections following the introduction of provincial autonomy brought the Congress party to power in a majority of the provinces, Nehru was forced, like faced with dilemma. The Muslim League under Mohammed Ali Jinnah who 
was to become the creator of pakistan had barely bad was fed barely at the polls congress therefore unwisely rejected jinnah's plea for the formation of coalition congress muslim league government in some of the provinces a decision that nehru had supported the subsequent clash between the congress and the muslim league hardened into a conflict between hindus and muslims that was ultimately led to the partition of india and the creation of pakistan imprisonment during world war 2 At the outbreak of World War in September 1939 the wise royal lord Lin Lithgow had committed India to war without consulting the autonomous provincial ministers the congress party's high command withdrew its provincial ministers as a protest but congress action left the political field virtually open to jinnah and the muslim league Nehru's view on the war differed from those of Gandhi. Initially Gandhi believed that whatever support was given to British should be given und- unconditionally and that it should be a non-violent character. Character. Nehru held that non-violence had no place in defense against aggression that the Indian should support Great Britain in war against Nazism but only as a free country if it could not help it should not hinder. In October 1940, Gandhi, abandoning his original stand, decided to launch a limited civil disobedience campaign in which leading advocates of Indian independence were selected to participate one by one. Nehru, the second of these leaders, was arrested and sentenced to four years' imprisonment. After spending a little more than a year in jail, he was released, along with other Congress prisoners. Three days before the bombing of Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, Hawaii when the Japanese carried their attack through Burma now Myanmar to the borders of India in the spring of 1942 the british government faced by the new military threat decided to make some overt tours to india prime minister winston churchill dispatched sir stafford cripps a member of the british war cabinet who was politically close to nehru and also new jina with proposals for a settlement of the constitutional problem crips mission failed however for gandhi would accept nothing less than independence the initiative in the congress party then passed to gandhi who called on the british to leave india nehru through reculent to embarrass the war effect the war effect had no alternative but to join gandhi following the quit india resolution passed by the congress party in bombay Now Mumbai on August 8 1942 the entire congress working committee including Gandhi and Nehru was arrested and imprisoned Nehru emerged from that his ninth and last detention only on June 15th 1945 within 2 years after his release india was to be partitioned and free a final attempt by the viceroy lord wavewell to bring the congress party and the muslim league together failed the labor government that had meanwhile displaced churchill's wartime administration dispatched as one of its first acts a cabinet mission to india and later replaced lord wavewell with lord mountbatten the question was no longer whether india is to be independent but whether it was to be consistent of one or more independent states hindu muslim antagonism kal culminating in the late 1946 in clashes that killed some 7000 people made the partition of the subcontinent inevitable while gandhi refused to accept it nehru reluctantly reluctantly but realistically acquiesced on august 15 1947 india and pakistan emerged as two separate independent countries nehru became independent india's first prime minister achievements as prime minister in the 35 years from 1929 when gandhi chose nehru as president of the congress session at lahore until his death as prime minister in 1964 nehru remained despite the debacle of the brief conflict with Indi- with china in 1962 the idol of his people his secular approach to politics contrasted with gandhi's religious and traditionalist attitude which during gandhi's lifetime had given indian politics a religious cast misleadingly so far although gandhi may have appeared to be a religious uh, conserv- conservative he was actually a social non-conformist trying to secularize hinduism 
the real difference between nehru and gandhi was not in their attitude towards religion but in their attitude towards civilization whereas nehru talked in an increasingly more uh, idiom modern idiom govern gandhi was harking back to the glories of ancient india the importance of nehru in the perspective of indian history is that he imported and imparted modern values and ways of thinking which he adapted to indian conditions apart from his stress on secularism and on the basis basic unity of india despite its its ethnic and religious diversities nehru was deeply concerned with carrying india forward in the modern age of scientific discovery and technological development in addition he aroused in his people an awareness of the necessity of social concern with people and the outcast and of respect for democratic values one of the achievements of which he was partially proud was the reform of the ancient hindu civil code that finally enabled hindu widows to enjoy quality equality with men in matters of inheritance and property internationally nehru star was an ascendant until 1956 october when india's attitude of the hungarian revolution against the soviets brought its his policy of non alignment neutralism under sharp scrutiny by the non communist countries in the united nations india was the only non aligned country to vote with the soviet union on the invasion of hungary and it was therefore thereafter difficult for nehru to command credence in his calls for non alignment in the early years after independence anti colonialism had been the cornerstone of his foreign policy his interest in the issue went however after zhou enlai the chinese prime minister stole the spotlight from him at the bandung conference of african and asian countries that was held in indonesia in 1955 by the time of first conference of the non aligned movement in belgrade yugoslavia now in serbia in 1961 nehru had substituted non alignment for anti colonialism at his most pressing concern the sino indian conflict of 1962 however exposed gandhi's wishful thinking thinking on non alignment when chinese forces threatened to overrun the brahmaputra river valley in the northwest as a result of long standing border dispute regarding arunachal pradesh state they exposed the hallowance of nehru's proclamation hindu chini bhai bhai hindu indians and chinese are brothers it means nehru's subsequent call for western aid made virtual nonsense of his non alignment policy china soon withdrew its troops the kashmir region claimed by both indian and pakistan remained a perennial problem throughout nehru's term as prime minister in the months after the partition of the sub- subcontinent in 1947 he made tentative efforts to settle the dispute between the two ca- new countries while hari singh the maharaja of kashmir decided on which country he would join the singh chose india however fighting broke out between the two sides the un brokered a cease fire line in the region and nehru proposed territorial adjustments along the line that failed the demarcation became the line of control that still separates india and pakistan administered portions of the region Nehru was more fortunate in his efforts to solve the problem of the Portuguese colony of Goa the last remaining foreign controlled entity in India although its military occupation by indian troops in december 1961 raised a furor in many western countries in the hint side of the history nehru's action is justifiable with the withdrawal of british and the french the portuguese colonial presence in india had become an anachronism both the british and french had withdrawn peacefully if the portuguese were not prepared to follow suit nehru had to find ways to dislodge them after first trying persuasion in august 1955 he had permitted a group of unarmed indians to march into portuguese territory in a non violent demonstration even though the portuguese opened open fire on the demonstrators killing nearly 30 nehru stayed his hand for 6 years appealing meanwhile to portugal's western friends to persuade its government to cede the colony when the indian finally struck 
Nehru claimed that neither he nor his government, government of India, had ever been committed to non-violence as a policy. Nehru's health showed signs of detroiting not long after the clash with China. He suffered a slight stroke in 1963 and more debilitating attack followed in January 1964. He died a few months later from a third and fatal stroke. Legacy While consciously assertive in his Indianness, Nehru never ex- exuded the Hindu aura and atmosphere cl- clinging to Gandhi's personality. Because of his modern political and economic outlook, he was able to attract the younger intelligentsia of India to Gandhi's movement of non-violent resistance against the British and later to rally them around him after independence had been gained. Nehru's Western upbringing and his visits to Europe before independence had acclimatized him to Western ways of thinking. Nehru did not conceal his differences with Gandhi on many basic social, economic and political issues. He did not share Gandhi's aversion to industrialization and he saw to it that India's early five-year plans after independence were geared towards heavy manufacturing. If Nehru had accepted Gandhi's non-violence, he did so not as a matter of principle but because he regarded non-violence as a useful political weapon and that and the right policy for India under the prevailing political conditions. Of all leaders of the Congress party including Gandhi, Nehru alone had given serious thought to India's place in the world community that enabled him not only to educate the Indian populace on foreign affairs before independence but to project his own views of Indian foreign policy when freedom came. If if Gandhi made Indians aware of India, Nehru made them also aware of others. When India achieved independence, the image it presented to the world was really Nehru's image in the early ages of Indian nationhood. The world identified India with Nehru. Throughout his 17 years in the Prime Minister's office, he held up democratic socialism as the guiding star emphasizing that India needed to achieve both democracy and socialism with the help of the overwhelming majority that the Congress party maintained in the parliament during his term of office. He advanced toward the goal. The four pillars of his domestic policies were democracy, socialism, unity and secularism. He succeeded to a large extent in maintaining the edifice supported by those four pillars during his lifetime.